Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another quick video. All right, y'all, just back with this real quick video here to uh, talk about former champion Ioana. And um, this was a recent interview she done, probably like maybe two, three weeks ago. One of the more recent ones I've heard her, you know, I kind of talk about her 2021 20, uh, plans. And um, I say it was done before Christmas. And, you know, she just talked about a few different things like fighting without a crowd, uh, fighting for title shots from here on out. And, you know, just discussing the Whaley Rose fight a little bit. And um, there's a few things I agree with and disagree with her about her. And um, I will say I was glad to kind of hear her give her assessment on Rose Namajunas and Whaley Zong as far as uh, uh, the style of fighters that they are and their strengths in the octagon. You know, um, of course, you know, we see it from the outside looking in, but to actually hear the fighter give them their props and see the exact same things, feel the exact same things we do, you know, you got to gotta say i'm glad that she's taking that humble approach now you know like with rose you know she says she's a smart fighter she knows how to keep distance and she packs power you know it could have been another thing for her to just say oh man like she just caught me or something like that like oh she just got lucky it was just a lucky punch but you know she gave her the credit that she's a hard puncher you know and a very smart fighter um and way lee you know she says she's a very strong fighter physically and you know she keeps coming forward so it kind of gives us an idea of what to look forward to when you match these two fighters up you know somebody who fights off a distance and has a good iq and then you have a very strong bulldog you know Whaley zong who's also just growing as a fighter and you know just experience uh, her uh her her second title defense and you know she's ready to prove something so she makes it a little bit more interesting you know just giving us those facts you know actually being in the octagon with them you know, but um, some other things she talked about, you know, fighting without a crowd and, you know, just fighting for title shots from here on. First thing I want to talk about her fighting with with no crowd. Now, Joanna did say she prefers to fight with the crowd. And if they called her, she would say yes. She said she would say yes if they called her now to fight. But in my opinion, that's her only choice. You know, it's not like you can kind of negotiate how many people you want there and negotiate having a crowd or not. You know, I understand that the crowd offers another uh, type of uh, level up for you. You know, it offers that uh, adrenaline rush. You know, some fighters, they thrive off the screams, the cheers and the jeers. But, you know, to put on the show right now, you know, you, you got to you got to you kind of have to make that adjustment. You have to make that adjustment. I mean, in the past, like before the no crowds came into effect, you know, back in uh, March when it first came into effect, I was kind of on the fence with it myself. You know, I, I compared it to actors on stage putting on a play you know i said it was kind of hard for an actor to put on you know put their all into a play rehearsing week after week after week and there's no audience on opening night you know with no audience for a play it's like a bus you know it's like a flop but as a fighter there's still another level to it you know for fighting there's always another level to it you know it's about the two individuals in the in the ring in the octagon where it is on the mats you know what i mean the outcome will always be the same if you're focused on fighting you know, whether or not a crowd is there, there will be a rise in the ranking. You know, a title belt or rise in the ranking is inevitable. You know, you're still going to get the reward for training hard and defeating your opponent. Especially in the UFC, you're still going to get paid. You know, so that's something that she doesn't have to worry about. Without a crowd, you're still going to get paid. Now, I don't know how it works for boxing and for MMA. Like, it, if it works for boxing, like, do you get paid off the live gate? You know, I mean, you know, that, that, that money might not be there, but a lot of boxers, they had to just take that pay cut there you know that they're still getting paid but they're not getting paid for a live, live gate so it's just an adjust it's just an adjustment for these fights you know there's a lot more popular fighters than Joanna and champions that are fighting without a live gate right now you know so it's just an adjustment that she's going to have to make and just say hey you know it's just a downtime in MMA um you got to remember that other businesses around the world they thrive off of crowds for a reason because they're they have paying customers you know with no paying customers business has gone out of business but see, with the UFC, boxing, Bellator, anything else, they can still put on a performance. It might be a little pay cut, but it's still a nicer pay than, you know, what these other businesses are going through right now. So that's a, that's just an adjustment that she's going to have to make, you know. So, yeah, I do disagree with her on that. But if she takes the fight, then, yeah, that's something that she's going to have to do, just like all the other champions. So a crowd is not really something that you can negotiate at this point. But um, something else she talked about uh fighting for title shots only from here on now i respect the fighter's stance you know i respect their body of work that they put in from the ground up and i know when a fighter is exempt from certain tasks you know from watching boxing 
pretty much, you know, all my life boxing and, you know, following MMA for a good portion of it now. I feel like I know what a champion's worth is. And, you know, again, I, I feel like I know what a fighter is exempt from going through certain different tasks as far as getting the title shot. You know, every now and then a fighter, they can get two or three title opportunities in a row. I'll give him that. If he or she was or is a long reigning champion, you know, if they're fighting like a rematch or a trilogy or, or quadrology or whatever, or if they're a superstar in boxing or MMA, those are some of the exemptions. You know, if you're going to continue to kind of hold that number one, number two spot and you have a rivalry going, then that's understandable. You know, you can get that title shot maybe a two, a second or a third time. You know, but for Joanna, her her reign ended almost three years ago. You know, and her, for her to think that she can only fight from title shots, you know, right now is that's not logical. You know, it's not uh, very logical. I mean, Joanna doesn't have to start from the bottom up, but she does have to get in line and maybe fight another top five fighter or two, while another worthy contender gets their shot. That's only fair. You know, especially when you you've been out of the octagon for a year, or so. Other fighters are lined up for that title shot, whether it be Rose or Carla, which I'm going to bring up about Carla in a minute. But I like Joanna's body of work. But Carla, you know, she's in that lineup now, whether you feel like she gets it or not. Uh, she could possibly get that title shot. You know, she could possibly get that. So you got to consider that whether you feel like she deserves it or not. There are other fighters ahead of you that could be in line to get that title shot while you were out for a year. And, you know, and then you also got to look at the fact that um Joanna's two and three in her last five fights and three of those losses were title shots you know so after a close loss to Wei Lee which was her you know most recent performance in, in nearly nearly a year away Joanna may have to take a fight or two to prove that she still has it you know that prove that she's still head and shoulders above the rest and then ask for that title shot and you know and that's and that's normal for any former champion who's been out of the out of the ring of the octagon for a while or coming off a loss you know Manny Pacquiao's done it he's come off a knockout loss had to go back and take on you know a tune-up fighter another top contender before he got the title opportunity Conor McGregor he's doing it uh Floyd does it Joanna's done it you know in between title fight Joanna's fought Tisha Torres and Michelle Waterson before she you know uh fought for a title each time you know she's never fought for a title like three or four times in a row you know, or challenge for a title three, four times in a row after losing the strawweight title. You know, she's always kind of fought in between. So the same thing is going to happen here. So if this does happen, she'll have to fight Yan Zhao on and make it look good, look good in that fight. And then, yeah, maybe a title shot will be in the cards for her. But, yeah, I disagree with her thinking that, you know, a strap is all she can fight for now every time she comes back. Like she wants to leave for a little while and come back. She gets the title shot. No, you still have to prove your worth as a champion each time. Maybe not from the ground up, like I said, but maybe for a fight or two. And you have to look good doing it by beating one of these top five strawweight contenders. Because the, the strawweight division can still thrive without her. I mean, I've discussed in another video, I feel like they still do need her as a personality. But right now, the strawweight division has a lot of talent. It does have a lot of talent to still uh, thrive and still say, so-and-so deserves a title shot. So-and-so deserves a title shot. You know what I mean? So even without her, we could still say who deserves a title shot. But you want to still hold on to the past. Now, each time you come back, you still have to prove it. Maybe not for like a big portion of, you know, your a whole year of you just fighting contenders. Maybe just one or two. Like like I said, Yan Jaunan is up there. That should be the next in line. Or going back to what I was talking about with Carlos Sparza. You know, she kind of threw some little shots there at Carla Spars in the interview. Just very small. You know, she was like, uh, I know Rose, Rose, Rose and Wei Lee may be fighting next. And then she was like, there may be some BS with Carla getting the title shot. So she sees that as BS as Carla getting the title shot. Well, if Carla's up there. Maybe try to take that fight on. And, you know, in another video, I might talk about this because I feel like right now for Carla Sparza, she may need to get some get back to really prove that she deserves the title shot, you know, because... A lot of people are, you know, feeling, this, you know, some sort of way that Carla Sparza ducked uh, Amanda Rebos. But let's say if she gets back in there with Ioana, beats Ioana, then they'll kind of ignore that. You know, they'll kind of ignore that that dark cloud. You know what I mean? So if if Carla's open to it, I'd like to see a rematch with Ioana, you know, because uh, Ioana kind of threw some little fighting words out there. Because to me, that those are little hidden digs right there where if I if I was Carla and I heard that, I would say, well, Joanna, if you come back, let's me and you fight 
And if I beat you, then I'll get the title shot for sure. You know, I'll solidify it by beating you since you feel like you deserve the title shot, right? So yeah, that's just my way of thinking, you know, from the outside looking in, of course. But uh, yeah, I do agree with her, Joanna, on that, you know, on that note that, uh, you know, she kind of feels like Carl is not as deserving for the title shot. Just a little bit, you know, just a little bit on that. But I definitely disagree with her feeling like she she needs to fight for a title shot every fight. You know, now nah, you got to go back to the drawing board just even for a fight or two, you know. So Jan Jana versus Joanna makes sense. Um, and if it happens, it's going to be without a crowd. You know, she's going to just have to take that, just like every other champion's doing right now. But yeah, man, that's all I got on this one, guys. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to re revisit that interview. It was like from a few months ago. If I can find it, I'll post the link. It, it keeps disappearing. Even when I type in Joanna interview, I can't find it. But once I find it, I'll post the link in the description. If you watch the interview, give me your thoughts on it. Combo Breaker 99. Make sure y'all subscribe. I'm out. Peace.